Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of Truth is the one that Jesus promised his apostles while he was almost like, you know, he was giving them farewell speeches, farewell speeches, because he was going to ascend to the Father. The Spirit of Truth, the one who will lead to all truth. So, God the Father sent his Son into the world to die, to reveal the Father, to reveal the love of God the Father, to show that love, God loves every individual soul personally, uniquely, in a special manner. So that's what Jesus came to do. And now when his mission on earth has been accomplished on the cross and he rose, he will ascend on the 40th day after, you know, ensuring that his apostles were in the right place, in the right frame of mind. Then he will ascend and promise them the advocate, the helper, the comforter, the consoler, the one who will lead to the complete truth. Now, the Holy Spirit will bring alive the words of Jesus that the apostles did not understand. You, you, you see the procession. It's, it's an eternal procession. So, God the Father sent his son to reveal him. And then, once Jesus ascends and tells Mary and the apostles to pray together, the first novena ever held to pray together, then the Holy Spirit will be sent from the Father and the Son to reveal more the Son. Then the church will now continue to grow under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then the truth of Jesus will be revealed from age to age. So you see, so, so the church is now, after the Pentecost time, the church became the, you know, the, the, the home of the Holy Spirit. But we cannot have that home without Mary superintending over that. Just being there, making sure that all is going on well. So it's the continuity of the revelation of Jesus until the end of time. And every individual amongst us will continue. Once we are baptized and we are in union with Christ, we will continue to exude with the Spirit of Jesus in such a way that personally He speaks to us. We listen to Him. We know very clearly Paul did not have a one on one interaction with Jesus while here on earth. No. But the Spirit of Jesus spoke with him on the way to Damascus. And once that happened, he was baptized by Ananias, and then he began to preach. What was he preaching from? Where was the testimony from? The testimony of the Holy Spirit. And in fact, sometimes he went so wild, <laughs> much more than Peter and the others. Can you believe that? You see? But he continued to reveal. And here he was in Athens. After he had been ambushed here and there, he been, you know, once you know, there's a big problem, they throw him out of the place. Sometimes <laughs> they throw him out of the place, you know, and <laughs> he continues, but it is the will of God for him to be thrown out so that he'll go to the next spot. And so that the work of God will continue. And here he's giving a clear summary. Summary like somebody who was just there. He was in the Arab Pagos, 
the Areopagus was a Greek community, you know, it's, a, it's a big stadium, like a stadium, where people come to meet and discuss politics. And so he was there, and he didn't care. He didn't care that he was going to be booed, okay? Because he was going to bring something that is strange. Something that people have never heard about. How will people be talking about politics, you know? About the, you know, where, where power is going and, and you just come to introduce the resurrection. <laughs> that guy does not have social etiquette. <laughs> Isn't what we'll say this year, this time. He, does, he doesn't have social skills. Because he doesn't enter into the bomb that is going on. He doesn't enter into the, you know, yeah, the dirt, the conversation. No, he just goes straight. He's focused. And he says, the creator of the human race made this man, he has made him appointed to be the judge of the living and the dead. And the confirmation that he has been made the, the, the leader is the fact of his resurrection. Resurrection from the dead. If Jesus did not rise, we will not be here. Pretty will be an empty thing. There's no reason for us to be here. And he says, that unknown God that you guys made a shrine to, I'm coming to talk about him now. You know, Paul is so smart and intelligent and he uses every opportunity to bring Christ up. It looks like that's how we should be living at you. Every opportunity to bring Christ up. Because if you listen intently to people, you will discover something that is missing. If you're having a rapt conversation, if you're not having a competition, you know, sometimes it's not a conversation, it's a competition. But if you listen to people speak, you will know you will know something is missing. Are you ready to gently, compassionately, kindly open something, a space to drop that, the word about Jesus? Yes, that's, that's, that's what God does. So he was so fine with it and was going on and going on. <laughs> they wouldn't have any of it when he came to the resurrection. Because nothing in their mind Someone rising from the dead? What does that mean? We went for NCYC about two years ago. You know, I went with some youth you know, from John B. And I can still remember, you know, some person who continued to say, Father, did you hear what the cardinal and the archbishop said? I said, no, what, what was it? He said, he said, Jesus is alive. That was what he took away from me. I was thinking to myself, but it's true. You didn't know that before. <laughs> Jesus is alive. It's alive. It's alive in me. It's alive in you. That's why St. Paul says, In him we live and move and have our being. In him we live. St. Augustine says, You know, so so unfortunate was I. I was looking for him in the outside. Meanwhile, he was in the inside. Always, always in the inside. Inside of me. That's why God can be discovered only in silence, not in noise. He's discovered in silence. But we don't love silence. Silence is not our favorite thing. You know some televisions are on even when people are asleep. Some TV sets are on when people are asleep. Just to keep the noise going. Then you can never listen. You can never how does the spirit penetrate your mind then? How does, how does it speak with you personally? Because he wants to speak with you personally. He wants to reveal Jesus Christ to you personally. No two souls in the whole human world, in the whole world, will perceive Jesus Christ in the same way. Not no two souls. Because God never makes duplicates. He makes originals. And you are an original. Don't mind what the world is saying. You are an original. <laughs> I mean original, no duplicates. <laughs> the spirit continues to tune us and tune us and tune us according to how God wishes us to be. And when we listen to that tuning, when we allow that tuning to happen, we will both send one on fire. Leading us to the complete truth, the truth about ourselves, 
the truth about the world, leading us to know the Father. Fatherhood. Fatherhood. <laughs> Fatherhood has been ruined by our society. Our culture has ruined fatherhood. Just look at the next television station. You know, I, I don't I don't, I think it's almost two years now that I've not seen a television. I, 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 I it's dead. I, I, maybe they, someone should come pick up that television. I don't need it. <laughs> somebody may need it. Because it's messy. And I and I want to be sure what goes into my mind. I don't want to be polluted by that. But fatherhood has been ruined. I know my father. My father could carry a baby. My father could carry a baby. He carried us. <laughs> Why is it that fatherhood just made like fathers cannot even take care of the child? And ruin. Meanwhile, he is the protector of the child. He is the defender of the child. He is the one who is the historical continuity of the generation of the child. He is the one that carries culture. He is the one that talks about heroism. He is the one that lives life of adventure. That is the part of the role of the father. How then? You see the messy thing that the devil does? When you ruin the, the image of a father, even in the family, you cannot even perceive God as a father anymore. You see the destruction in the culture. <laughs> Let us pray for fathers. And women are looking for fathers now, if you don't know. Women are looking for men. They don't want to be married to another my woman. <laughs> they want to be married to men. Men who can lead. Men who can show the way. Men who can express their masculinity in a very, very conscious and positive way. In the way God made it. We are poor. We are hungry. We are thirsty. We are asking for the deal. We just have to admit it. The Spirit of God is who will reveal that to us. Pray to Saint Joseph. <laughs> Saint Joseph, please help us. That we as priests, we, we renew what it means to be a father. Father to our parishioners. <laughs> Fathers. <laughs> Not just a reverend father. You know, sometimes Joseph was a reverend, he was a reverend. He's a father. Priest. We have only one father, but the life of a priest, children should see fatherhood and walk to him. The priest, the priest could be so, we, 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 we shouldn't be time, time bound. No time bound. We shouldn't be time bound. Walk from now to this time. Where is that? No, no, no. Fathers are full time job, isn't it? <laughs> it's a full time job. Mothers are full time job. <laughs> Lord, lead us to the truth. Let us rise and pray.